Oh, and uh, for, for props, you can see I have my chair. I have a strap hanging over the chair. You can use a yoga chair. You can use your dining room chair. Um, you can use a strap. If you don't have a strap, take a belt from your closet. Take a, a towel from the bathroom or, or a beach towel. All of those uh, will work fine. And my setup here is a little higher than, than normal. So I have a, a, a setup here with three blankets instead of two, just because the higher lift makes me feel a little bit more open. I'm allowed to, I'm able to lengthen through the side ribs more, give more space to my breath. So if, if you feel you need a higher lift or even sitting in a chair as, as we did uh, last week at some point, I highly recommend that. No reason to suffer. So let's begin. You might hear Mateo or Adith in the background. And they might even join. Mateo might join us. So find yourself a, a comfortable sitting position. You're going to be like this cross-legged. If you want one of the other positions, Vajrasana, sitting on your heels or sitting in the chair, you're welcome to do that. Do you want to sit, little buddy? No? <clears throat> Ensure that your shoulders are over your hips. You want to get your yoga mat? Yeah. Can you help him get a yoga mat? Okay, then go get it. Uh, for me, I, I tend to lean back because it, 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 in my head, it makes my chest feel more open, but it closes off the lower back, it hardens the diaphragm, makes it harder to breathe. So I actually have to lean a little bit forward so that my shoulders are indeed over my hips. Then my lungs open. Come join. Rest your hands on your thighs, upper arms in line with your, your side ribs. And just take a moment to be here checking in with yourself. You want to balance evenly on your sits bones. What do you need to adjust to get there? And you want to begin to release the groins. So lengthening from the inner thigh to the inner knee, there's a lengthening there. And then from the inner thigh back towards the lower abdomen, there, there's a lengthening. So that whole area is lengthening on both legs. Notice which leg you, you do first or which leg you do at all and the other leg doesn't really pay attention. Just send the flesh of the inner thighs down and draw from your outer knees to your outer hips, compact your hips together. Compacting your hips together in such a way that you don't grip the inner thighs that you've just lengthened and released. Notice how each of these actions affects the body, how each of these actions affects the breath. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. So they draw in, the abdomen draws back towards the spine. So you wanna find a support with your muscles, but not a rigidness, not a hardness. Allow the shoulders to drop down and away from your ears, away from the sides of your neck, and lengthen from your inner armpits to your inner elbows, what we sometimes call the groins of the arms. So the groins of the legs are lengthening, the groins of the arms are lengthening. And again, noticing how that affects the breath, the, the space of the breath, where the breath flows. <coughs> Keep your elbows where they are, take your palms together, touch your, your thumbs to your chest and use your thumbs to just move the flesh of your chest towards the ceiling. The flesh of the top of the back begins to roll down. Again, keep the front bottom ribs into the body as you do this. Rest your eyes into your cheekbones, gaze at your heart the seat of your heart, the seat of your soul. 
and allow your facial features to completely relax. The face should be still. Go inward and begin to observe the breath. You do not need to breathe, the breath will breathe you. Allow the breath to breathe you, you become the witness. Noticing the quality of your breath. Noticing the quantity of your breath. Noticing how and where your breath flows. And let's chant the syllable OM three times together. Exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Lifting your sternum, your chest towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. Still seeing that you're not leaning the shoulders back or forward, shoulders are over the hips. The chest lifts up towards the chin, the top of the back moves down. Observing the breath breathe you. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. With your eyes closed, raise your head. From the back of your head, gently let your eyelids open. Straighten your legs. <clears throat> Come to the, the edge of your lift. If you're on a chair, you can do this on, on the chair too. You can either move to the floor, which is fine or um, you can have your legs straight coming off the chair so your legs would be at, at a slightly downward angle. That's fine, hands by your hips. Yeah, that's fine, you can be on my mat. Take your hands by your hips, dandasana. Toes up. Turn the thighs in, press the thigh bones down. And when, when I say turn the thighs in, what you really wanna do is have the, your kneecaps pointed towards the ceiling. So the kneecaps point towards the ceiling and the toes point towards the ceiling. Feet together if they go together. If not, then you take your, your feet hip distance apart. Totally fine. And you want to press the thighs down. In one of the other classes uh, that, that was being taught, someone had asked during the class about the tendency to press the, the knees or where the shin bone meets the knee down more than the thighs and, and what, what to do about that. So one is just bringing your awareness there, bringing the awareness to the tops of the thighs and press the tops of the thighs down. The other thing you can do is actually move the shin bones up towards the ceiling. You can move the shin bones towards the ceiling as you take the thighs down. And also press the heels down, especially if you're flat on the floor or closer to the floor. Um, if you press your, the, the knees, shin bones down, the heels get lighter. So if you press your heels down first, keep the heels pressing down and then press the thighs down, making sure that the heels do not get even the teeniest bit lighter, then you're less likely to go into the knees. Now what you do want to do is open the backs of the knees. So the top of the calf moves towards your heels and the bottom of the hamstring moves towards the buttocks. 
So the eye of the knee is the back of the knee. Can you open up the eye of the knee? So the top of the calf moves towards the heels. The bottom of the hamstring moves towards the buttocks. And that allows you to open up that back of the knee without just pushing the knee down, the shin bone down. Now we have to lengthen the groins again. So lengthen from the top of the thigh, both legs out through the inner knee, through the inner heel. From the top of the thigh back towards the lower abdomen into the body and take the flesh of the inner thigh straight down. Draw from the outer knees to the outer hips and compact your outer hips together. Again, that work of the outer legs without gripping the inner legs. So keeping the lengthening, the releasing of the inner legs as you contract and compact the outer legs. Make sure the front bottom ribs moves towards the back body, the, abdomen's draw, the abdomen draws in slightly. Elbows back, lift up to the side ribs. Make the side ribs nice and long, but not the one where you just throw those ribs out and harden in the diaphragm. So the ribs still have to come in and then there's a lifting and a lengthening through the side ribs. Dandasana, staff pose. Now remember the experience of your legs right now. You're going to separate them, but you want them to do the same exact work that they're doing now. So separate your legs wide. Make sure they're even, make sure they're on the same plane. Now again, the thighs have to turn in such a way that the kneecap points up and the toes point up. And for many, there's still that tensity to push at the knee or push where the shin bone meets the knee. So instead, you can press the heels. The heels also do move away from you. And then press the thigh bones down. You can think of the shin bone moving up and the thigh bones going down. Of course, if, if you're one of the people that can straighten your leg, so we have some people that straighten the leg too much and take it in the knee, and some people that can not straighten the legs. If you're still on the side of my legs don't straighten, then press those thighs down. Just focus on pressing the thighs down. And then everyone add this opening of the back of the knee, this opening here. So the calf moves towards the heel, calf moves towards the heel, and the hamstring moves towards the buttock, so that the back of the knee opens. The thigh bone moves down, the top. So not, not here by the knee, although eventually, yes, the whole bone. But most of us do this area by the knee too much. So you have to get this top of the thigh bone moving down. And even take your hands, take your hands to the tops of the thighs and push down. As you do that, many of you will notice that the torso rises up. Sometimes we take sandbags and put them there. Sometimes we take weights and put them there. And the more your thigh bones go down, the more your torso rises. So push the thigh bones down, allow the torso to rise. Now keep that lifted torso and put your hands back. Front bottom ribs still move towards the back body. There's the lengthening of the inner thighs, inner groins. Again, both directions. So out through the inner knee, through the inner heel, back towards the abdomen. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs and draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Keep pushing down with the thighs. Even the sits bones, push the sit bones down to lift the torso. Keep the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Find the lengthening through the side ribs. Don't open by just leaning your shoulders back. The shoulders stay over the hips. Open by finding the length in the side ribs. Now, take your hands on the inside of your knees and pull straight up. The feet will come together, you can take them together. Take your hands back by your hips. If your knees are way high up, then take, take a higher lift, sit on, on another blanket or another towel. Now here again, there's a tendency to do this one and lean back, which we, we do do sometimes. You can do it. There is a backbend version of this pose, but, but that one has to be intentional. If you're going to be doing a backbend, do the backbend. 
But for right now, let's see if you can keep the shoulders over the hips. It does take slightly more abdominal work. Press the heels. Lengthen from the inner thigh through the inner knee, from the inner thigh, top of the inner thigh, back towards the abdomen. So this whole groin is lengthening. Descend the flesh to the inner thighs and draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Keep pressing the heels. Watch those ribs, draw the ribs in, lengthen and lift through the side ribs without leaning back, without hardening the diaphragm. Take your hands on the outside of your knees. Use your arms, push your legs together. Pull behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten your leg. Other knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg, hands by your hips. Shoulders over your hips. Again, thigh bones pressing down, kneecaps, toes towards the ceiling, lengthen the inner thighs, descend the inner thighs, draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. The more you press those thighs down, the more you compact the hips together, the more your torso lifts. And release. So you can put your lift to the side. We'll start for downward facing dog. If you need the chair for downward facing dog, do it. If you use blocks for down, downward facing dog, use them. If you want the coffee table for downward facing dog, use the coffee table. Oh, I start on your hands and knees. Shoulders over your wrists, knees slightly behind your hips. Spread the fingers wide with the first finger pointing forward. Press down to the ball of the first finger and thumb. Rotate the upper arms out, but don't fall into the outer hand. You don't want to rotate the upper arms so far out that you lose the inner hand. So still press down with the inner hand, rotate the upper arms up. Turn your toes under, straighten your legs. Keep your shoulders above your, your wrists for a moment. Press your thighs up. Take the ribs into the body, all the work that we've been doing. Even here, the lengthening of the inner thigh, out through the heels, but back towards the abdomen. The flesh of the inner thighs, this time moving up, but still front of the leg to the back of the leg. Now push into the floor, inhale, and on your exhalation, take your sit bones up and back, chest towards your thighs. So move the thighs back. Move the chest towards the thighs. Take the sit bones towards the ceiling. Now the work of the legs is the same as we've been doing. So lengthen from the inner knees up to the inner groins, up through the inner groins, I should say, all the way up towards the body. Take the flesh of the inner thighs back and lift from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips together. Open the eye of the knee. So take the top of the calf down towards the heel and take the bottom of the hamstring up towards the buttocks. Open the eye of the knee. So don't just press the knee or shin bone back, but the thigh bones move back and you're opening up the eyes of the knee. And all of this begins to, to work the legs so that all the pressure is not on the wrists and not on the shoulders. And then look up, walk your feet forward, come into a forward bend. So hold your elbows. So take your hips over your heels. Take your hips over your heels. So forward bend, holding your elbows. And you know I'm seeing a, a, a couple screens here. You want your upper arms in line with your ears. 
Don't take your arms and pull them towards your legs. Move your arms away from your legs so your upper arms are more in line with your ears. The legs are now the same. Balance evenly on your feet here. Press the thigh bones back. Not the knees, not the shin bone, but the thigh bone. Open the eyes of the knees. So that means the top of the calf moves down towards the heel. The bottom of the hamstring moves up towards the buttocks. Lengthen the inner groins from the inner knees all the way up deep into the body. Take the flesh of the inner thighs back and lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact the hips together. Let the legs do the work. The more work the legs do, the more the torso falls over your thighs. And then from here, we'll do down facing dog one more time. Let your arms go. Take your hands on the floor. If you have to bend your knees, that's fine. Otherwise, straight legs is fine too. And then walk your feet back, downward facing dog. Can you get that work again? Can you press the thighs back? Can you lift the thighs up? Both the inner legs, so from the inner knee, lengthening towards the abdomen. And the outer knees, really strong. Outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. Can you get both the inner and outer leg awakened? The front of the leg also, from in front of the kneecap, the front of the kneecap, from above the kneecap, you lift up towards the bottom. Now keep the thighs pressing back, open the eyes of the knee. The calf moves down towards the heels. The bottom of the hamstring lifts up towards the buttocks. Take your abdomen, now roll it into your tailbone, press your thighs back. Send your outer heels down, lift your outer hips up. Now on your exhalation, take your armpits towards your thighs. Armpits towards your thighs. And then look up, walk your feet forward, coming back into a forward bend. Hold your elbows. Upper arms in line with your ears. So you have to take your upper arms further away from your legs. So for many of us, the arms drop. And I want you to take the arms up so that they're in line with your ears. And then do that work of the legs. The same work. So the thigh bones press back, lengthen from the inner knee, lifting up towards the abdomen, the flesh of the inner thigh is moving back, lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips together. Opening the eye of the knee, top of the, of the calf moves down, bottom of the hamstring moves up. The front of the leg too, the front of the thigh, the, right above the knee that lifts all the way up into the body. And all that work allows your torso to fall over your thighs. On each exhalation, take your chest towards your thigh. I'm sorry, chest towards your toes, towards the floor, towards your big toes. The breath also helps. Allow your breath to work with the pose. Let your arms go. Take your hands on your hips. Take your elbows towards the ceiling. Extend the chest forward, but don't lose the legs. So, so many people just stop working the legs now because we're about to lift the chest. Keep the thighs pressing back as the chest moves forward. Keep lengthening the inner thighs, the flesh of the inner thighs back. And keep compacting the hips together. Now keep those actions and then inhale, come up. Don't lose the legs, don't lose the legs, don't lose the legs. And then extend the arms to Dasana. You can keep your feet hip distance apart or you can take them together so that the feet are together. The legs should be exactly what we've been doing. So hopefully some of the memory of your body is there. And if not, that's okay too. It depends how long you've been doing this. Press the thighs back. Lengthen from the inner knees through the inner groins, all the way up through the lower abdomen. 
Take the flesh of the front of the, uh, the flesh of the inner thighs back and lift from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Which leg is working harder? Can you work the legs evenly? And that doesn't always mean working the weaker la leg or less aware leg more. Sometimes it does, but sometimes that's working just as much as it can. You actually have to back off the stronger or more aware leg. So what do you need to do to find an evenness here? Now lengthen through the side ribs. Keep these front bottom ribs towards the back body. So it's not this one here. Right? So a lot of people end up doing this. They take the shoulders back, stick the ribs out, and lift the chest up. The chest does lift up, but not by leaving the shoulders back. It's shoulders over the hips. These ribs come in. And then how can you maintain that and lift the chest up? That actually gives more width to the chest instead of just the, the, this lifting here, if you bring the ribs in, there's more of a, of a broadening across the chest, creating more space for the lungs, which is where the breath needs to go. But again, you have to see which side is working harder, which side ribs are longer, and how can you even them out? Urdhvastasana, extend the arms out to the sides. Remember what we were working on the other day. Hold your arms up from your armpits, not your shoulders. Keep the arms straight. Arms in line with the shoulders, so don't take the arms forward. Or best, some people overdo it and take them back. That's a different pose. Now from your armpits, turn your arms up. Do most of the work from the armpits. At the very end, yes, you have to turn your wrist to turn your, your so the palm faces up. Notice how your front ribs went forward. Take your front bottom ribs towards the back body. If you didn't notice that it happened, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And then from your armpits, keep the arms straight, push your arms up. I don't care how close the arms get together. I don't care if you, there's my chandelier again, I don't care if you bang into something in the ceiling, but keep those arms nice and straight. Front ribs towards the back body. And then from there, lift up to the side ribs and the armpits. Now the leg work is the same here. So thighs back, lengthen the groins, move the flesh of the inner thighs back, outer knees to outer hips. And there's even that work of the, of the back of the knee, the eye of the knee. So the top of the calf moves down, the bottom of the hamstrings move up, both legs equally. Notice which elbow wants to bend. Even as I talk, I hate talking and, and demonstrating this pose because my right arm bends. Even at 20 years of doing this, it's still bent, sometimes both arms, but the right arm usually goes first. I have to keep all my awareness to keep straight arms here. From your side ribs, lengthen all the way up. Shoulders moving down as the arms go up. Find freedom in the neck. Don't push the head forward or the chin down to do this. Eyes gazing parallel to the floor. Turn your arms out to the sides, come down. Tadasana, check in with yourself. Check in with the breath. Observe as the breath breathes you. How is the breath changing over time? Interlace your fingers together. Right first finger on top. Turn the palms out. Keep the thumbs together and then try and get the webbing of the pinky fingers together. Now you can get your legs first. If you don't get the legs, the benefit, this is shoulder work that we're doing, but the benefit to your shoulders are much less if you don't get the legs. So thighs back, open the eyes of the knee, lengthen the inner groins, release the inner groins, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Maintain that. Take a snapshot of that and don't let it change. Now take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Take a snapshot of that. Don't let it change. Push the webbing of your fingers together and inhale and come up. Keep those ribs in, thighs back, ribs in. Thighs back, ribs in, elbows nice and straight. Extend the wrist towards the ceiling. So from your side ribs, extend up, all the way lengthen through the armpits, through the wrists. The shoulders move down. As soon as my awareness moves out of my body, even just speaking to you, my ribs come forth. So I have to keep drawing the ribs back into the body, draw the thighs back. And release your arms out to the sides, come down. 
Interlace your fingers together. Take your left first finger on top, the opposite first finger. Just gently touch the, the tips of the thumbs. Don't push them into each other, but gently touch the tips of the thumbs. Turn your palms up. There, thighs just came forward for me. Ribs came forward, so I have to be aware. Thighs back, ribs back. Do all the leg work again. Lengthen the groins. Outer knees to outer hips. Open the eyes of the knee. Ribs in. Now, don't take your shoulders back as the arms go up. Can you keep the shoulders directly over the hips? Sometimes we've done this with our backs against the wall. So imagine you're leaning up against the wall. Your shoulders cannot move back. Inhale, come up. Notice how the elbows want to bend as, as, as you take the arms up. Can you keep them straight? Can you keep the thighs back, the ribs back, the arms straight? From the side, it's lengthening through the armpits, the arms through the wrists. Keeping the thumbs touching, seek the pinky webbing towards each other. Release your arms out to the sides, come down. Tadasana. Are you really coming back into Tadasana or are you waiting for the next pose? Are your legs working? Are you balanced evenly on your feet or at least seeking that even balance? The eye bones back. Opening the eyes of the knees. Lengthen the inner groins. Outer knees to outer hips. Shoulders down. Extend the groin to the arm. Remember how we started a class extending from the inner armpit out through the inner elbow? Can you extend the groin to the arm? Now here's another good one that I like to do for the shoulders. You, you can take, take a chair and you can do this on a counter too. I do this on the kitchen counter when I am waiting for food to cook. I do it all the time. You want your elbows on the chair. So the elbows are on the chair, fingers interlocked and take your upper arms parallel to the floor. Your torso is parallel to the floor. Your knees can be about underneath your hips. The hips go, go back, but, but not like that, but, 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 but the hips form a traction. So the hips move back as you lengthen from your armpit to your elbow. Armpits, I should say, both arms, armpit to elbows. Now, as you push the webbing of your fingers towards each other, take the wrists away from each other. And release. We'll do it again. I just want to really show you in case it's not clear. So, so your wrist will be like, like the, you're interlocking, right? And you want the wrist to move away from each other. So as your elbows are here on the chair, if you look at my hands and my wrists, right? The wrists are moving away from each other, not the elbows. The elbows will stay firm on the chair, but the wrists move away from each other. And that has a direct action to the shoulder blades. Another thing that, that we tend to do, so you might be doing this, is when we do this, we tend to drop these ribs down, right? So we start doing this one, right? So there, there's this drop here and the ribs draw down. So I want you to resist that. I want you to take these front bottom ribs towards the back body, top of the buttocks, away from the shoulder. So this is top of the buttocks towards the shoulder. This is top of the buttocks away from the shoulder and the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Again, place the elbows down now, shoulder distance apart. You can switch the interlock of the fingers. You can even rest your head on the chair, which is kind of nice, but ensure that those front bottom ribs move towards the back body and then lengthen the side ribs lengthen and then really from the armpits towards the elbows. And then as you push the web into the fingers together, take the wrists out towards the sides. And hopefully you're still lengthening the groins Outer knees to outer hips, just nice to keep that awareness. Flesh of the inner thighs going back. That helps draw the abdomen slightly in. And release. And then from here, let's see if that shoulder work did anything. Go back to downward facing dog. So hands either on the chair, your blocks or the mat. Shoulders over the wrist, spread the fingers wide. First finger pointing forward today. Rotate the upper arms out, but press into the inner hand at the same time. So the forearm actually rotates in. 
the wrist actually rotates in. And you press through the inner hand as the upper arm rotates out. Turn your toes under, straighten your legs, do the arm work again, forearm in, wrist in, press through the inner hand and rotate the upper arms out. Push into the floor, inhale, keep those ribs in. Exhale, thighs back, chest towards your thighs. Now do all that leg work again. Press your thighs back. Lengthen the inner groins. The flesh of the inner thighs moving back. Outer knees to outer hips. Compact those hips together. Open the eyes of the knees. And on your exhalation, take your armpits towards your thighs. See if there's any more open space there. Any more open space. And then look up, walk your feet forward. Take your hands on your hips, extend your chest forward. Legs are still working, don't lose the legs. Legs still working, inhale, come up. Take your feet together, Tadasana, check in with yourself. And release. Come get your chair. Have the back of the chair facing the front of the mat. And then sit in the chair so the right side of your body is facing the chair. I, I, I've been feeling the need to do more twist lately. I don't know if all the energy in the air, it, all the, it fills the body up with these toxins, at least that's what I feel. So twisting begins to wring that out, wrings out the organs, and it also flushes the organs with oxygen and, and twists. When you squeeze, the blood is, is pushed away. So then when you, when you untwist, you unsqueeze, all the oxygen gets to run back into the organs. <coughs> Excuse me. So extend your arms forward, arms up. Don't push those ribs out. Reach up. Now take your arms out to the side, shoulders down. Hold your arms up from your armpits. Inhale, on your exhalation, turn towards the chair. Use your left hand to pull, your right hand to push. Inhale, now lift up through the side ribs. Exhale, turn. Don't worry so much about the head turn. In fact, look in the direction you were looking. So look over your left shoulder. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Drop the shoulders down. Begin to observe how does the breath flow you during the twist. And exhale, come to center. And then you just have to stand up, walk around to the other side of the chair. Arms forward, arms up. Really get that length. Notice if your ribs went forward when you took your arms up, keep your ribs in. Then arms out to the side, find that lengthening. Broadening, widening, so there's a length and a broadening. Inhale on your exhalation, turn. Don't worry about the head. Keep looking straight where you were, over, over that, that right shoulder. Inhale, lifting up through the side ribs, pull with the left, push, uh, pull with the right, push with the left. Turn. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Pace of your breath, not my, my speech or my breath. Take your shoulder bones away from your ears. Inhale, keep the lift. Exhale, come to center. Now, you can get up and go to the other side, but you don't even really need to. You can just stay sitting and 
slide yourself around. Turn back to side one. If you want to stand up and turn, that's fine. Arms forward, arms up, lengthen. Watch those ribs, keep them in. Now here, readdress your legs. Lengthen the inner groins from the top of the thigh up to the knee, from the top of the thigh back towards the abdomen. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs and draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Keep the legs. Turn your arms out to the sides, arms parallel to the floor. Re-engage the legs, lengthen, release the inner thighs, draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Take a snapshot of the legs, keep it there. Inhale, exhale, turn the torso, keep looking where you were looking. Re-establish the legs, lengthen and descend the inner thighs, outer knees to outer hips. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Keep those front bottom ribs into the body. Don't let them puff up. Don't let the top of the buttocks come up. The top of the buttocks moves down, the ribs move in. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Wrap those ribs around. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. So the left ribs move forward, the right ribs move back. Take the shoulder bones away from your ears. Now keep the lift, don't collapse. Keep the lift, exhale, come to center. The lift should still be there. And then shift in the chair to the other side. Did you puff your ribs out? Keep them in, arms forward, arms up. Did you puff your ribs out? Keep them in. Now descend, lengthen the inner thighs, descend the inner thighs. Outer knees to outer hips. Arms out to the side. Reestablish the legs, lengthen the inner thighs, descend the inner thighs, outer knees to outer hips. Inhale, exhale, turn, not the head, the body, not the head, the body, reestablish the legs, lengthen the inner thighs, descend the inner thighs, outer knees to outer hips. Keep the front bottom ribs towards the back body, top of the buttocks down. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning, not the head, the body. Keep the legs, keep the ribs in. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Wrap the ribs around. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Don't turn the head, turn the body. Keep the lift, exhale, come to center. And come up to standing. You can put the chair to the side. We're going to set up for Utita Trikonasana, a triangle pose. So if you want to have a block or a chair to your right hand side, that's fine. Otherwise, you'll take a uh, hand on your shin. So come back to Tadasana in the center of your mat. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jumper step your feet wide. Take the wide stance, so feet are below your hands as your arms are extended. But you have to keep that work, work of the legs. Is your torso just falling onto your hips? Then you need to do the work, so the, the work of the legs. Balance evenly on your feet. Take your thigh bones back. Even here, opening up the eyes of the knee. So I know your legs are at an angle, but, but still, the top of the calf moves towards the heel. The bottom of the hamstring moves up. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Lengthen the inner thighs, inner knees, up through the lower abdomen, the flesh of the inner thighs, moving back. All that is here. And then as you can pack your hips together, the torso lifts up. Your front ribs may puff forward too. Take the front ribs back. And then turn your left foot in, turn your right leg up. Two straight legs. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Press the outer rim of the back heel, turn the front thigh, lift from your outer knees to outer hips and really compact those hips together. There's still the lengthening of the inner groin. So the releasing of the inner groin. Now keep pressing the back heel, resist with your left arm, with the back arm, and exhale and come down and take your right hand on your shin or on a block, on the chair. You can take your chair to the side, that's totally fine. Now everyone take your left hand on your hip for a moment. Look down at the floor for a moment. Now get the legs, so take the back thigh back and press the back heel and turn the front thigh out. 
and lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact your hips together. Lengthen and release the groins again. Now, looking down, rotate your torso towards the ceiling. Keep looking down, keep looking down. Outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips, look down as you turn the torso. And at some point, you can't really look down anymore. The head just begins to turn. They need to look forward or, if it's accessible, look up. Then take your thumb into your armpit, and then you extend your arm straight up. Observe your pose. Let the breath breathe you. If, you. if you're struggling with your breath, you're working too hard, work less. Let the breath breathe you. And then reaching through your top arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Pause here for a moment. Are you holding your arms up from your shoulders or your armpits? Hold them up from your armpits. Are your legs doing the work? Are your thighs back? Are you lifting the outer knees to the outer hips? Are you lengthening the inner groins? Right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. Press the outer rim of the back heel. Turn the front thigh from the inside out. Lift those outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. And don't forget, lengthening the groins too. Now reach through the back arm as you press the back heel and then come down. Take the right hand, right hand on your hip. Look down today. The right thigh, back thigh goes back as you press into the outer rim of the back heel. Turn the front thigh out and lift both outer knees to outer hips. Now keep looking down and rotate the torso. Rotate, 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 rotate. At some point you may not be able to look down anymore. And in that case, begin to turn the head either looking forward or maybe you can look up today. Don't force it. And then take your thumb and your armpit and then extend your arms straight up. Reestablish the legs if you're losing the legs. Outer knees to outer hips. Extend the arms away from each other. Let the breath breathe you. Observe the breath as it breathes you. And then reach up with that top arm. Pull yourself up and up. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Parvita Trikonasana, revolve triangle pose. So take your fingertips up by your chest, bend your knees, jump or step your feet apart. Take your hands on your hips for a moment. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Now, pick up your back heel. You want to just square your hips towards the side wall. So it's not the open one, but the hips are now squared towards the side wall. Still front heel in line with back arch as best you can. If you can't keep your balance there, then you can have your front foot off to the side a little bit. But, but notice how this back hip wants to move back. So can you move that back and forward? You do have to turn the thigh in to do that. Don't just push the shin bone back to, to press into the back heel, but press the thigh bone back and open up the eye of the knee. Okay, this should not bother your back heel. If, if, if it does, or if you just can't get that heel to go down, then you can take a blanket, a pillow, anything, and you put that under your back heel and that, that's totally fine. Square those hips. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen from the inner knees all the way up to the lower abdomen. Now extend your arms out to the side. Drop the shoulders. You'll inhale, and on your exhalation, turn the torso towards that front leg. So turn the torso towards the front leg, and then, I know you can only see my back now, and then you take your left hand onto your shin, the right arm goes up. Now take your right hand on your hip for a moment. 
Square those hips so that right hip needs to move back. Extend the chest forward so you're extending the spine, extending the side ribs, and then turn again. Turn again. And then if you'd like, if you have your balance, you can extend your left arm up. Or just keep it on your hip. Now the balance is in the back heel and the bottom arm. Everyone take the top hand, take it on your hip, press into your back heel and swing your arm up and out as you unrevolve yourself. And then both hands on your hips. Take a breath here. By the way, if you fell, celebrate yourself. Celebrate the learning of something new. It took me well over a year not to fall out of this pose coming out. Turn your right foot in, turn your left leg out. Again, we need to square the hips to the side wall. So pick your back heel up, turn the hips so that they are completely square. That back thigh turns in, the front thigh turns out, the back thigh turns in. Lift your outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips. <coughs> On that back thigh, press the back thigh back, Open the eye of the knee as you press the heels down. Lengthen the inner thighs, the flesh in your thighs moving from the front of the leg to the back of the leg. Now extend the arms out to the sides, keep those hips nice and compacted. Inhale, exhale, turn. So the torso is now turning towards the front leg as much as you can. And then inhale, press the back heel, exhale, take your hand down. And some of you are going to lose your balance right away. Just take your hand on your hip, the top hand. Move that hip back as you move the chest forward. So you lengthen the spine, lengthen the side ribs. And then rotate the torso. And then if you have your balance, you can re-extend the arm up. And then with your hand on your hip, press the back heel and really swing your arm up and out. Swing it up and out. And then come to center, jump or step your feet together. All right, we're going to try it another way. I want you to use your chair this time. So you'll face your chair. You'll take your right foot forward, left leg back, and I have my foot underneath the center of the chair. So, so it's under the chair. So it's not the one we do sometimes where we're away from the chair, but your foot is actually underneath the chair. Your left leg is back, front heel in line with back arch, and your hips are squared to the wall. Lengthen the groins, descend the groins, draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Watch those ribs puffing forward. Draw the ribs into the body. Now extend the left arm up, reach up, reach up, and then push both hips back as you reach forward, and then take your hand onto the chair. So the hand can go about the center of the chair, so it's about a, 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 what would be on top of your foot. So this is going to allow you to get a little bit more length in those side ribs. But that right hip still comes forward, so please take that right hip back. Extend the chest forward. It helps to lengthen the groin. So can you lengthen the groins, both legs, inner knees towards the abdomen. Move the flesh of the inner thighs from the front of the leg towards the back of the leg. Keep compacting the hips. Now look down. Look down at your foot or through the chair towards your foot and rotate the torso. Keep that hip moving back. Back heel down, rotate, keep looking down. The head wants to turn, look down, 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 turn. At some point you just can't look down anymore. Then you can look straight. If you have flexibility, you can look up. Don't force that. For me, I still like to look straight in this pose. And then extend your arm up. Parvita Trikonasana, revolve triangle pose. Let the breath breathe you. If you don't have your balance with the arm up, just keep it on your hip and work on the turn. Turn, 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 turn. Now 
And then take your hand on your hip, turn your torso towards the chair, take both hands on your hips, press the back heel, inhale, come up, step your feet together, Tadasana. We're really just wringing out all the, these insides today to get unstuck if anything's been stuck there. All right, other side. So left foot forward, right leg back. Again, the foot is underneath the chair. Square those hips, front heel in line with your back arch. Compact those hips together. Lengthen the groins, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back. Outer knees to outer hips, compact those hips together. Watch those ribs, keep the ribs into the body. Top of the buttocks down, ribs into the body. And even here, you can still open the eyes of the knee. Top of the calves down, bottom of the hamstrings lifting up. Extend the right arm. Inhale, keep the hips where they are as you extend forward, extend the chest forward. And then take your hand on the chair in the center of the chair so it's over your foot. Take that left thigh back, extend the chest forward, right? So you want the two sides of your torso equal in length. The, 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 this side of the front leg, that tends to shorten. So you have to take that back so the two sides of your torso become even. And once you have that lengthening, look down, down and begin to turn. Look down today. I know we don't always do that, but see what happens if you begin to look the opposite way. Turn, 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 look down, look down, look down, look down, look down. At some point you can't anymore. So then allow the head to turn, either looking forward or looking up and extend your arm. If you don't have balance, don't extend the arm. Just keep it on your hip and keep turning, turning, rotating. You get more rotation if you look down. So don't be afraid to look down again for a moment. Get a little bit more turn. And then you can look forward or up and extend the arm. And then hand on your hip, turn your torso towards the, the, the chair. Just take both hands on the chair for a moment. Take both feet back, downward facing dog, hands on the chair. If you're not using a chair to do downward facing dog on the floor, Coffee table, stairs, blocks, whatever you have. Lengthen through those side ribs now. Find an evenness here. Don't let the front ribs drop. Draw the front ribs into the body. Lengthen the inner thighs. Flesh in the inner thighs moving back. Outer knees to outer hips. Look up, walk your feet forward. Tadasana. All right, go get your lift again. Let's have a seat up on a lift here. Start off in Dandasana. So the legs are forward. Thighs on, on your, your lift, I'm sorry, buttocks on your lift, thighs off, peel the flesh away from your buttocks, right? So the sit bones move away from each other, hands by your hips. Elbows back. So here, even after all the work we've been doing, I still feel myself leaning back and my ribs coming forward. So yeah, I have to go out to the legs first, thighs down, not the knees, shins, the thighs, Lengthen the inner groins, descending the inner groins, outer knees to the outer hips. Now ensuring that my shoulders over the hips bring those front bottom ribs towards the back body. And that helps release my shoulders. So for those of you that have neck shoulder issues, you have to take care of what's going on in the rest of the body also. Rachyasana one, take hold of your left leg inside of the knee and lift up. Then take hold of your ankle, draw it in and place your heel down. 
Take your hands around your shin and lift up. Take your right hand behind you, lengthen up through the torso and side ribs, right? The length is more important than the twist. The lift is more important than the twist. Extend your left arm up, reach up, get all that length, begin the turn, but look forward and then bend your elbow on the inside of your knee. Look forward to bend. Stand into that, that bent leg heel, inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Just look forward for now. Rotate the, the shoulders, uh, move the shoulders away from your ears. Watch those ribs puffing forward, ribs into the body, top of the buttocks down. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Look forward for now. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. And then at the very end, you can turn to gaze over your right shoulder. And then for a moment, look forward again. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn more. And then look over your right shoulder again. It might be a little bit more now. Keep that straight leg thigh turned in. Lengthen the inner thighs, both legs. Flesh in the inner thighs, moving from the front of the leg to the back of the leg, outer knees to the outer hips. That action is very important in twists as well. See that you're not leaning back as you do this. Don't turn the twist into a back bend. Exhale, come to center. Keep the lift, don't collapse. Keep the lift, hands around your shin. Lift the chest, hands behind your knee. Draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag your heel. Dandasana, notice the sides of your body. And then hold behind the knee, the other knee. Draw the leg in, take hold of the ankle, pull it in, place the heel in line with your sit bone, hands by your shin, lift. Keep the lift, take your left hand behind you. Use that back hand on your lift to lift some more. Extend the right arm up. Watch those ribs, see even my ribs come out. So I have to keep drawing them and drawing them in. So I lengthen through the side ribs and spine, not just pushing the ribs up, not hardening the diaphragm. Rotate, turn, look forward, but rotate and turn and take the elbow on the inside of your knee. As close to the armpit as you can get without collapsing. Now lift, look forward, lift first. Inhale, exhale, turn. Inhale, lifting, the lift is more important than the twist. Stand into that heel, that bent leg heel. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Keep the shoulder bones away from your ears. Looking forward first, inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. At some point, yes, you can turn your head, gaze over your right shoulder. But your body will turn more if you look forward. And then look forward again, over, over your right shoulder. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. And then gaze again over your back shoulder. Maybe it's turned a little bit more now. That front leg's still working, thigh bone down. Both, both legs, the groin's lengthening, outer knees to outer hips. Keep the lift, exhale, come to center, hands around your shin, lift. Hands behind your knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, straighten your leg. Dandasana. Rinchyasana three, hold behind the, the left knee again, draw it in. Take hold of the ankle, pull it in towards you, hands around your shin, lift. Now, as you lift, lean forward. Right, so don't collapse and lean forward, but lift, lean forward, take your right hand and hook your elbow around your shin. If you can't get your elbow, then sure, just do your hand, that's fine, right? So hand or elbow. Take your left hand, take hold of your belly button and draw it to the other side of your thigh. Keep looking forward, take your hand behind you, use that back hand to lift. Use your knee against your elbow to help with a turn. Using your hand to pull against your thigh, turn. The straight leg, thigh turning in, lengthen both groins, draw both outer knees to outer hips. Really compact those hips together and see how that changes the turn. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead first. At some point, sure, you can look back if you want. Take that shoulder bone over your, away from your ear. Keep that front thigh turned in, outer knees to outer hips. Work the legs to get the twist. And then look forward again, twist more. 
So look over your right shoulder. Soften your face. Observe the breath, breathe you. And exhale, come to center, hands around your shin, keep the lift. Hands behind your knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, straighten your leg. Other leg, lift the leg up. Behind the knee, take hold of the ankle, draw that in. Hands around the shin. Now establish that straight leg, don't just ignore it. It's really quite important here. Lengthen both groins, outer knees to outer hips. Start it here, don't just get it once you're in the pose. But can you lengthen the inner groins? Descend the flesh to the inner thighs. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. We've been doing this all class. On that straight leg, even opening the eye of the knee. So the calf towards the heel, <coughs> excuse me, bottom of the hamstring towards the buttocks. Lift, come forward, but keep the lift as you come forward. Take that left arm, hook the elbow. If you did the hand the other side, do the hand. Well, let's hook the elbow. Take your right hand, take hold of your belly button and draw it on the other side of your thigh and that hand goes behind you, look straight first. Now reestablish the legs, is that front leg working? Is the thigh down? Are you lengthening the inner thighs? Are you drawing the outer knees to the outer hips and are you compacting those hips together? Really compact the hips together. That helps lift the chest. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Again, pulling with the arm against the thigh, that helps the turn. Shoulder bones away from your ears. Take a few breaths looking forward. If you'd like to look back on an exhalation, you can turn your head back. And then look forward again in a lifting exhale turning. You get more twist looking forward. Keep the lift, exhale, come to center, hands around your shin, hands behind your knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, straighten the leg, hands by your hips. Dandasana, check in. What's the quality of the body, the quality of the mind, the quality of the breath. And then one last downward facing dog, either on the floor, the chair, your blocks, coffee table, stairs, forearm, wrist rotates in, press the inner hand. As you rotate the upper arm out, make those one action, not two. Toes under, straighten your legs. Inhale, lengthen the arms. Exhale, downward facing dog. Work the legs, thighs back, lengthen the groins. Outer knees to outer hips, open the eyes of the knee. Is there more length on the side ribs now following all these twists? Let's keep those ribs into the body, don't let the ribs drop. On your exhalation, take your armpits towards your thighs and take a couple breaths here, let the breath breathe you. Observing what's different, what's changed. And then if you're on the floor or blocks, bend your legs, have your knees touch the floor precisely the same moment, come to child's pose. If you're on the chair, walk your feet forward, come up into Tadasana. And if you're in child's pose, take your hands underneath your shoulders, push to come up. And then everybody lie back for, lie back, set up for your Shavasana. So take a blanket or a pillow underneath your head. Lie back. You lie back with your, start with your legs bent, your feet on the floor. So you'd be like this here. Legs bent, feet on the floor. And then you'll bend your legs into your chest and just hold the face of your knees for a moment. Uh, 
On your inhalation, let your legs move away from you. Keep your hands on the face of your knees and just let the legs move away from you. On your exhalation, draw your legs towards you. So take a few breaths like this. Inhale, legs move away. Exhale, thighs move towards you. Massaging the abdomen, releasing the lower back. On your next inhalation, take your feet to the floor. Take your hands to the top of the buttock, scoop the flesh towards your heels, lengthen the lower back. And then drag your right heel on the floor, straighten your right leg, drag your left heel on the floor, straighten your left leg. If you need a bolster underneath your knees, take it. If it's more comfortable with your calves on a chair, I should have said that before you lie back, uh, but, but you can certainly take your calves on the chair. Take your arms at 30 degree angles to your body and let go. Let go. Feel the support of the Mother Earth below you. You're not alone. You are being supported right here, right now. You do not have to hold everything together yourself. Can you allow yourself to accept and receive the support of the Mother Earth below you? You do not need to breathe. Allow the breath to breathe you. A lot can be learned simply by witnessing the breath and giving the breath permission to do the work it knows needs to be done. Can you let the breath breathe you? Let it choose how long the inhalation is going to be. Let it choose how long the exhalation is going to be. Let it choose where in the body to flow. It knows what part of your body needs you right now. Can you step out of the way? Can you take a step back in your mind's eye? Become a witness, the observer, the seer. And watch, observe, see as the breath breathes you.
Take a soft, smooth, peaceful inhalation. In a longer, smooth, peaceful exhalation. And again, a soft, smooth, peaceful inhalation. In a longer, smooth, peaceful exhalation. Lengthening the exhalation, making the exhalation longer than the inhalation. It's very calming for the body. Let's take a few breaths like this. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor. With your knees together, feet apart. Take your hands and place them onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands penetrate your body pierce through your layers and heal. Whatever it is you may need healing with today. Healing can be physical, healing can be emotional. We can wait for healing from the outside or we can begin to do that healing on our own for ourselves. When you feel ready, extend your right arm past your right ear, roll to the right. Of course, if it's easier for you to roll to the left, then roll to the left. Place your left hand on the floor in front of your heart. Turn your torso towards the floor first. Push to come up. Come up chest first, head last. Then come up to sit and you can set up your lifts, sit cross-legged. I'm sitting in Vajrasana with my buttocks on my heels. That's fine too. Sit in the chair. Bring your palms together at your chest. Draw your eyes back and down. Take a moment, observe your practice. What's different? What's changed? In the body, in the mind, in the breath. Remember to take your practice with you outside of this room into all of your daily actions, into all of your interactions with other people, with kindness, with compassion, kindness and compassion for others, most importantly, kindness and compassion for yourself. Let's close our practice together by chanting this little om one time collectively. Deep inhalation. Oh. Can you let your eyes open? Big smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you. Thank you, everyone. Here, I'll see if I can unmute you. All right, you're unmuted now. Thank you, Thanks, Donovan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Does, does anyone have any questions about anything? Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. well, that's beautiful. Then go on with a beautiful day. And thank you so much for being here. We're so grateful to you. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Jonathan. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chaya. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. Bye. How are you? I'm 